All right, uh, welcome to our webinar this evening. My name is Lexi Bier. I work here in K at KGI in the admissions office. And I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Sharma, our OCD program director. Um, so it's mostly gonna be his show today, but I'm here just to help answer questions. So I'll be moderating the chat a bit. So if you have any, any questions you wanna ask in the chat, please feel free. Um, and then we'll also save some time at the end as well to have more of a discussion and, and ask questions if you wanna ask um, live and, and have a conversation, we will do that. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, Dr. Sharma, you take it away. Thank you, Lexi. Let me first share my screen here. Okay, can everybody see this? Yes. All right. Okay, well, welcome everyone. I, I can see some familiar faces here. <laughs> So welcome again, and let me introduce you myself first. I am uh, Dr. Vikas Sharma, and I'm the program director here at KGI for the Occupational Therapy Doctoral Program. Uh, a little bit introduction about myself before we dive into the program overview and the details. Um, I've been an occupational therapist close to now 29, 28 years. Uh, primarily, I work in skilled nursing facilities, integrated school settings and, uh, you know, special schools and all that. And uh, so basically my experience is more in mental health and geriatrics. Uh, I've been here in this country since 1996 and I have worked in Kansas, uh, Michigan, and uh, since 1999, I've been here in California. So uh, as far as my uh, educational journey, like teaching is concerned, uh, after you know working for so many years in these nursing facilities, I decided to move into academia back in 2015 after completing my doctoral degree in occupational therapy from Chatham University, Pennsylvania in Pittsburgh. And then uh, after that, I was at Stanbridge University as a instructor, first starting as a part-timer and then became full-time and then again, you know, promoted as a program director. And uh, I've been here at KGI since 1st September. Uh, the reason why I moved to KGI was that it really inspired me, the mission, the values, and what I look into myself in the near future. So before, uh, you know, uh, moving to this place, you know, I was actively involved with, you know, all students, uh, you know, their, their progress in the you know, field of occupational therapy, getting them, uh, you know, educated. But, you know, when I moved to KGI, you know, it was more and more knowing about the profession and, you know, getting to know this uh, wonderful field. So before I start, is there any questions for me or anything you want to ask? Or shall we start? All right. So uh, we're going to start with the program overview first. Uh, as you can read here in the slides that it talks about the scholars and innovators of practice. So our main mantra here at uh, KGI is uh, innovators. We, we, we want to promote that. And uh, innovation is something which we really look at. And scholarship is another piece. When you say scholarship, you means that scholarship of integration or scholarship of discovery uh, or collaboration. So when we graduate students from here, of course, you know, this is a new program. So it's not something we have you know, graduated uh, before. But again, the goal here is to get that scholarship piece, that innovation piece in each one of you. So that when you graduate from the program, you are well equipped to, you know, enter the field with any kind of inventions you want to make in the profession of occupational therapy or scholarship, when you talk about scholarship, again, presenting at the conferences or writing articles or, you know, promoting yourself, advocating for the profession of occupational therapy. And the ultimate goal is uh, maximizing the health and the well-being through uh, daily life activity, which, you know, occupational therapy is focused on. Another piece which we look at, uh, you know, in, at KGI is uh, for the clinical excellence, it is very important that you not only develop uh, professionally or 
theoretically, but your clinical expertise also should flourish. So, you know, with all the field work experiences and the capstone uh, projects, which you will be taking here, you will get that, uh, you know, full uh, taste of how to be practically, you know, competent in the field of occupational therapy. But nevertheless, I know that other programs also focus on capstones and field work. Uh, but I can tell you at KGI, as I told you, the innovation and scholarship part. But on the top of that, we really encourage students to uh, take the interest in what they want to do. So we have like a lot of electives. We have a lot of uh, specialized courses where you will be fully developed, you know, what you want to do in the field of occupational therapy and where you want to head towards. Also, lastly, you know, you will have the tools to establish yourself as a, you know, distinguished, uh, for, for a distinguished career uh, in the wide range of settings. So as you know, that occupational therapists, they work across different lifespan, moving from uh, NICU, childhood, you know, toddlers, and then going into adolescence, middle age, uh, adulthood, and then even up to the hospice care. So, you know, when you are in this particular uh, industry of occupational therapy, you know, there is a huge scope of, uh, you know, working across variety of settings. So at KGI also we promote that we will give you the taste of different, uh, you know, areas, different focused, you know, target population where you will be uh, learning about different age groups and the populations which occupational therapists normally work with. So that, that makes it more unique and also, as I said, that we look into the specialized areas where you want to focus on based on electives, based on, you know, specific capstone project, which I will be, you know, talking about uh, pretty soon. So you will understand what exactly I'm talking. So that's what we promote at uh, KGI. Now, the first and foremost thing, wherever you will go, you need to know that what is the mission of that institution. So when I talk about the mission, you know, it could be based on what the values of the institution are. But at KGI, the OTD mission is to really meet the needs of the individuals, communities, and populations for meaningful participation in daily life activities through a transformative and dynamic educational experience. So basically, when you are here at KGI, you are like a blank slate. You're coming here, you know, you want to mold yourself, you want to express right yourself. And once you, you will get the education here, you will be a transformed person. Now, I know it seems little philosophical, but again, you know, when, when, you, when you will see the rigor of the program, when you will see the courses which you will be taking here, you will understand the transformation in you. And it's a lifelong learning process. It doesn't and just, you know, uh, while doing this course, you will see that once you will progress and once you are towards the end of the program, there will be a huge transformation and shift in you. And it's a dynamic educational experience. Nevertheless, you will see that you will be involved in different uh, community events. You will be involved in different associations and also, you know, working uh, alongside with your peers through learning through each other and also discovering certain things, you will have a dynamic experience here. You will get the uh, you know, experience to collaborate with uh, different team members and not only within the profession, but outside. You know that there are many courses here like pharmacy or physician assistant. So it's, it's not just working in silos, but getting an exposure to know the other fields where occupational therapy uh, can contribute to. As you know, that occupational therapy is a holistic science. So we, as a profession, we can really spread ourselves and you know spread our roots in any direction. And in that way, you get the full transformation in your life when you get out of the program. Sorry, I think there is some problem here. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So um, this, this was the mission we just talked about. And then the vision. So the vision is again, the focus is on the occupation. 
Now, occupations are meaningful activities which are important for anybody, you know, in this world, whether it is a child or whether it is an older person or even like a homeless person, you know, you will see that they, everybody of us needs some meaningful occupations. And our main focus here at KGI is to really uh, focus on the, that occupation-based lens. So as you can see here, uh, the statement, which says we envision the innovative potential of therapeutically utilizing occupations to promote and sustain health, well-being, participation, and inclusion to meet a wide range of ever-changing real-world needs. So since there is a continuous paradigm shift, things are changing. You know, as you know, what happened with COVID, things have changed. So we are also in that dynamic uh, relationship with the changing uh, world. And we make sure that when we are teaching our student, we keep occupation at the center. As you know, that it is the core subject which prepares students for the future of practice. As it is healing, it's a change agent, and it makes your identity being meaningful and purposeful. Now, if imagine if somebody doesn't doesn't have any occupation, for for example, if you are, uh, you know, you are not uh, doing anything constructive and you are just sitting there for a couple of hours, it makes you feel like you know you have nothing to do or you feel bored. So everybody has to be occupied. So as you will see that in most of the courses which we have uh, made here at uh, you know uh, KGI, you will see that all of the courses have occupation-based focus. Now, I don't know if you are aware or not, uh, but occupational therapy practice framework is something which the occupational therapy education is based on. And that occupational therapy pr practice framework has the uniform terminology, like how occupation can be used, how occupation goals can be made. So you will see that throughout the curriculum in different subjects during different terms, you will get an exposure to know how to utilize occupational therapy practice framework, how to make occupation-based goals. And we, we really focus that particular area in all of our courses throughout the curriculum, as you will see. Now, going back into the little bit uh, details of what we have currently and what we are heading towards, as you can see here in this picture, uh, right now, currently, we are a total of seven faculty, which includes uh, adjuncts and also full-time people. Uh, in fact, we are hiring uh, three more people or maybe two to three more people by the end of this year. So it will be fully equipped uh, with all uh, occupational therapists. Uh, the work is in progress. And then the course will offer a total of 128 credits to you. Uh, there will be eight semesters altogether. We just started the cohort back in August 2022, which was our first cohort. So if you will come on board, that will be our second cohort starting in August of 2023. So currently we are interviewing uh, for 2023 fall. I think some of you participated in that interview last week. And we are actively uh, interviewing for the next uh, you know, many months. The total duration of the program is about close to three years, which is about 2.7, 2.8 years. And the total capacity of the students is 40 students altogether uh, for the entire cohort. As you can see here uh, in the picture, this is the way the skeleton of the curriculum is. Uh, the first year is mostly focusing on foundational courses, like you will be learning about neuroscience, anatomy, uh, physiology, foundations, different frameworks of occupational therapy practice. Uh, so there will be three uh, trimesters. And then you will have three level one fieldwork within the same first year. Now these Fieldworks are related to whatever you will be taught in that specific term. Like, for example, if you are taking pediatric courses, you will have fieldwork related to the pediatric courses. If you are uh, taking the adult uh, or older adult co courses, the fieldworks are related to that. So you will have three level one fieldwork uh, during those, uh, you know, different terms uh, during the first year, like based on psychosocial adults and older adult settings. 
Now, as you move into the second year, you will have two trimesters. So as I'm saying that we have didactic as well as we have practicum associated with uh, fieldwork courses and labs. And then there will be three level one fieldwork courses in the second year, which will actually include one fieldwork on lifestyle medicine, because uh, that is one of the curriculum threads we have for our program here. We focus on lifestyle medicine and which is an emerging practice area. And then there will be also uh, another uh, level one on pediatric courses. So that will be the part of the second year when you will have three uh, level one fieldwork courses. So altogether, there will be six level uh, one fieldwork courses, which I don't know if any of the programs uh, you know, throughout California offers that. And then there will be a level two fieldwork, which will be the first one. And based on whether you will be placed in maybe a, an adult setting or maybe an older adult. So you, once you will have that particular exposure in level one, fieldwork level one, then the second time you will go, it will be a different uh, setting, which will be in the third year. And that is the total duration of 12 weeks. Uh, so that's, that's very rigorous where you will be getting more hands-on working with the real patients. Now, just remember that that level one uh, fieldwork could be, some of the portions could be simulated because that's, that's uh, what uh, the accreditation, uh, you know, has approved that they can uh, they can have simulated, but we try to place you at the you know real setting so that you get the exposure. So there might be a little blend of simulated and real, but the level two are completely uh, you know on on site you know exposures you will have. And then in the third year you will have uh, the second level two fieldwork. As I said, there will be two level two fieldworks, which is also for twelve weeks, and then you will have a doctoral capstone, which is fourteen weeks. So all together, if you calculate the total number of hours, it will be about 1740 hours of experiential learning with fieldwork and capstone, which is a, quite a good chunk of hours hands-on. Uh, I remember that in my time, I didn't get that much because maybe the time was different, but nowadays I think uh, the experiential learning is so important that, you know, uh, people or the students, they say that we want to really work on the patients. And of course, the didactic foundation is important, but they really focus on, uh, you know, experiential learning. And then that is excluding the labs. Remember that, mm -hmm. that each theory course will also, not each theory course, but most of the theory courses, you will see that have lab component attached to it. So you will also get uh, exposure to work on each other or on the standardized patients or simulated or with, alongside with your faculty you know, member uh, in the labs. So you will get that uh, you know, exposure as well. So the learning outcomes, uh, this is important because that is kind of uh, a guide map for you or it will tell you how your students are doing and what they are going to be heading towards. So as you can see, there are seven program learning outcomes. And by the end of this uh, program, we want you to get or get well-versed in all these program learning outcomes. So as, I mean, I, I'm not going to go each on each and every one, but just give you a little bit summary of that. Client-centered care, Occupation as a primary therapeutic agent, I can't stress that more. I already told you about the importance of that. Conducting research, you will have like research courses where you will be uh, paired up with your peers uh, alongside based on your interest, specific interest. And then you will be doing a research, whether it could be a typical research or it could also be a project, maybe a needs assessment. And then you will be provided a faculty advisor who will be guiding you through the whole process. And then you will be disseminating the result, uh, either going to the conference or writing an article or doing a postal, uh, uh, like doing a postal presentation. So there will be a different ways of doing that. So you will be doing that research. And then also, uh, you know, in general, you will also be working on uh, developing your overall professional skills through different courses. So it is not just about building up the professional skills, but also your soft skills, how to communicate, how to interact with your patients. So there are courses on ethics, on advocacy, 
you know, leadership management. So you will be learning about all those uh, great things. And then culture, which is so important, because as you know that as an occupational therapist, we uh, work with uh, different clients with different cultural backgrounds. Uh, and it is important to know what they are bringing in and how we should respond to them, whether it is communication with them or whether it is treating them. So you will see that that cultural piece, uh, you will be taught uh, a lot of times through different courses and how occupational therapy can help uh, people with the diverse backgrounds. You will learn more about that. I'm sure you know about that from your undergrad and other uh, you know, places where you have learned about those things. But again, in occupational therapy education, it will be specifically focused on uh, this particular uh, area of uh, you know, occupational therapy lens, how, how to you know, uh, teach different culturally diverse people and also serving as leaders to advance the occupational therapy profession through innovation, inquiry, and advocacy. So again, you know, this is kind of a nutshell of everything what you will be uh, achieving after you know, doing this uh, particular program. The curricular threats, the curriculum design, I would say there are nine of those. Again, you know, they are kind of interlinked or interrelated to whatever I have told earlier. Uh, occupational justice, health equity, lifestyle medicine is a prime focus here. We, we really will be paying attention to that piece. And innovations, whole person care, holistic science, occupation, again, as a change agent and as a healing modality. Research, you will be learning a lot of research and opportunities how to conduct research, how to, uh, you know, uh, do the needs assessment, community, uh, you know, outreach. So you'll be doing a lot of those kind of good things, scientific and theoretical grounding of practice, and then overall your professional identity and lifelong learning. You will get chance to go to the conferences where you will be doing the presentations. And uh, through that, you will be networking with uh, many professionals, knowing about different products. Uh, also, you know, that's a place where you will also look for future employers uh, who can actually absorb you right away. Sometimes, you know, when their students are there in their final year, they, they are very uh, interested to go to the conferences and talk to the employers. And sometimes, you know, they are hired right there and then. So you'll get those kind of uh, all good things here in the program. As far as the highlights of the programs are concerned, uh, these are some of the highlights. As you can see here, we make sure that we pay focus on mental health and psychosocial practice. As you know, that the origin of occupational therapy, which started 100 years back, more than 100 years now, in 1970, is rooted in mental health. So psychosocial practice is interwoven throughout the curriculum. Even though the courses are on, are on physical dysfunction or the courses are on any other, you know, maybe uh, physical agent modalities, but you will still see that mental health piece there so that you understand it from a holistic point of view. Uh, fieldwork every trimester of the didactics. It's not just dry didactic courses. You will get fieldwork every trimester, which is fun. You know, you will get that experiential uh, experience there. And uh, there are two semesters of pediatrics. I know that most of the people who want to go into the profession of occupational therapy, they really want to focus on pediatric. They really want to work with children. Of course, you know, you can have different interests, but we have two semesters of pediatrics, so you will get enough, uh, you know, uh, knowledge about pediatrics. Also, program development and entrepreneurship. I know some of you want to be leaders. Uh, maybe you will work at an association level one day or you want to open a private clinic or your own business. So we, we, we make sure that we give you all that education here, how to start a business, how to be a manager, a program development through different courses. Also, you will have uh, ability to take up to four OT electives. We are in the process of hiring since it's a new program. So the electives are not until the fall of 2023 for the new cohort which just started. So we will have like specialized uh, electives uh, for you to take. And I can give you an example, like we are collaborating with medical device engineering department here so that we 
OT students and the medical device engineering students can work together for some kind of electives like fabricating assisted devices or maybe you know creating some kind of program development also maybe related to uh, perinatal mental health or maybe related to occupational science so there are different uh, electives which you will be provided with and you have to do two electives in that fall of 2023 for the new cohort I'm talking about but for you guys it will be 2024 and then there will be following that there will be another term where will you will be doing two electives so you will be given a choice of electives and whatever you want to do you can do it based on your interest and based on what you want to be and group research project I already mentioned about it and the capstone so this is one piece which makes it different from the master's program. And I'm sure you guys are aware that there's a dual point entry for occupational therapy. So even if you have a master's degree, you can still get your license. But uh, the advantage of doing the occupational therapy doctoral program is that you will also do a capstone. And I, I think, you know, as occupational therapist, uh, you know, each one of us wants to guess, get the best, you know, of uh, wherever we are trying to get admission into. So uh, these capstone projects are really tailored based on your interest areas. And I can show you, you know, different uh, areas which we will be focusing on. And we are actually, uh, we already have like about uh, close to now 85 contracts or affiliation agreements, and we are still expanding and getting more and more capstone and fieldwork projects or sites, I would say. In that way, you know, you guys can get the best out of what you want to do. In fact, I was there last week at one of the psychological, you know, center for the women's health. And I was very, uh, you know, happy to meet that personal over there. And she was talking to me how we can uh, start new capstone projects with our students on women's health or, you know, anything related to, you know, mental health. So there, there are so many avenues, uh, you know, we are looking at. I touched about the distinguished uh, piece earlier, but again, there are other features which you will see at KGI, like the engineering and design collaboration. Now, one of the good things which makes us different from other institution or which is unique or which is one of the hallmarks, I would say about uh, KGI is that the interdisciplinary collaboration and even myself, I'm learning, you know, the places where I have worked before, I've seen that mostly they're working in silos. But here you see that everybody knows what's going on in pharmacy or what is going on in, you know, uh, other physician assistant program. We recently had our white coat ceremony where all the professionals, all the students from different programs, they were together and we celebrated it together. So that gives you a different kind of a feeling because in the real world, you do work with so many other interdisciplinary team members. So that gives you that feeling from the very get-go. And as you proceed in the program and as you become a fully fledged uh, you know, occupational therapist, it's, it's an easy transition for you because you know how to communicate with different team members. And as a student, there is so much to offer. I would say like students, sometimes they really take the program further and instructors are more like facilitators because we, we already have that occupational therapy knowledge, but we want you to grow. So we really encourage you to collaborate with other allied health fields or other fields. So you, you really broaden and uh, you, you get the best out of your, uh, the program like that that gives you the best picture so engineering and design collaboration lifestyle medicine innovative clinical skills and community based practice uh, you know i was just talking to actually lexi this morning who is from the outreach program admission so we were talking about how the community based practice is so important like re outreaching uh, the community making them more aware about occupational therapy whether it is uh, through associations or whether it is through different chapters so we, we are all uh, for it. And I'm very pro in encouraging these kind of things because I know that students can take it further and we can grow together. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, we are in the, since we are a new program and there are different, uh, you know, 
things to look at it. If we look at DEI, we have committees, but again, at the association level, there are chapters which we are thinking of starting where students will be involved you know, as chairs, they will be given their say on uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion because we make it a holistic, uh, you know, program. People from different backgrounds can be there and they can actually contribute to the growth of the profession. OT in higher education, you know, we, you will be, maybe you are aware, you will be surprised to know that we have OTs here. Uh, we have hired who is working in a student affairs you know, in a non-traditional setting, and she's working for the mental health of, you know, students. So again, you know, the role of OT in higher education and to make it more uh, prevalent in the, you know, or maybe uh, make people more aware about what this profession is all about. It's not just within the clinical setting or within the walls. We can even go outside the walls and see what's happening. We can even outside we can go even outside the borders of this country internationally if there's an earthquake or those kind of things. So I am I'm all for it. And as a program director, I think I will encourage this to my future uh, you know, students who can really uh, promote the profession that way. Trusted partnerships. We have a lot of partners here, community partners, and we are in the process of expanding that, whether they are industry partners, whether they are healthcare partners. So you tell me about it. So if you go to the site, you can actually uh, look at uh, different relationships which we have established. But again, you know, we really encourage it. And then we also have events at a specific time, you know, almost every month, every other week, so that we are in const constant touch and our students get the maximum benefit out of that. I'm going to go a little bit on the capstone project. I know for the sake of time, there are a lot of things to be talked about, but uh, just to make sure that you get uh, the maximum uh, of this uh, you know, particular program. Uh, so the capstone project, just to let you know that you will be uh, paired up with a capstone coordinator who will be the coordinator for you for that particular capstone. And then there will be a mentor faculty mentor who will be a specialized in that specific capstone, uh, I would say topic. And then we will also select a site mentor for you, whom you will be you know, placed at. So you will have like different components of the capstone. Uh, for those of you who, who know about it, probably you, know, you are aware that how the capstone is, but for the graduate program, it has more rigor, rigor in it. So we will, uh, perform that using these two components like the capstone project and the doc doctoral capstone experience, the actual experience. And uh, there are different uh, you know, ways to look at it. If I can share with you, I think I have it here, like based on uh, the capstone project, different topics could be clinical practice skills, research, program and policy development, leadership, advocacy, administration, education, and theory development. So out of these different topic areas, you can pick and choose what you want to do. And then we will find a site for you. We'll find a specific faculty mentor for you. And along with the help of the capstone coordinator, you will be involved in that capstone project for 14 weeks. It's about 560 hours. That's a quite a lot of time. And then you will be disseminating that. That will be your baby, which you will be having it at the end of the program and make you feel happy and proud of. I remember that when I did my capstone for my doctoral program, I was so excited. Uh, my capstone was on the relaxation training uh, for people with schizophrenia who have anxiety. And when I disseminated the result and I had my book published, the manuscript, I was so happy. And it gives you a different feeling like, okay, you know, you worked so hard on that and now it has finally formulated and it has, you know, come up. So uh, that that's that's one of the greatest uh, things about doctoral program versus master's program to have a capstone project. This is an overview of the fieldwork and the capstone, as you can see, uh, starting August of 2023 and going into the end of the year, you will have your level one community-based fieldwork experience, which is 40 hours. And then you will go into the second semester, which will be, I would say it's a trimester rather than semester, but you can call it semester from January to May 2024, where you will have uh, level one again, and that will be 40 hours based on adults and older adult population, because that's the course you will be doing. 
Now you are, you might be wondering like why we have uh, two different courses in two different semesters. The reason is that in one co in one particular uh, you know uh, semester you will only be doing a part of that the evaluation and the intervention outcomes and then that will be further uh, advanced in the second uh, term. So you will get different topics. You will learn about different conditions and OT interventions and evaluations outcomes, and then you will have the field works associated with it. Similarly, as you can see for the pediatric courses, you will have level one pediatric for 40 hours in semester four, and then in five, you will have 20 hours for lifestyle medicine and 40 hours for pediatrics. So as I told you that there are six level one, as you can see, there are two 20 hours altogether, community-based psychosocial adults, uh, older adults, pediatrics, and lifestyle medicine. And then towards uh, the end of the program, like semester six and seven, you will have level uh, two fieldwork, level uh, one, one uh, fieldwork A and one fieldwork B, which is 12 weeks each. And that will be full time. Like you will be going at eight o'clock, 8.30 in the morning and ending your day by five o'clock. So that's that's like just like working as a typical job. It's, it's your internship. And then finally, in semester eight, you will have your capstone. So by the time the program will be ending, it will be 2026. The time goes fast, but uh, we already have completed like the first semester with our uh, first cohort. So we are so excited. The time is going so fast. I think we are good on time. Okay, so uh, some of you were already there in the interview process, so uh, probably for you it's it's not a new thing, but I think for those of you who are joining it for the first time, uh, again, we look at the holistic admissions process. Uh, we, we encourage diversity. We make sure that we consider each and everything when we are uh, having you as an applicant whether it is your personal statement, whether it is your uh, goals in life, uh, what you want to be, where you want to end into, what you want to do in your life, right? So all those things are important. And your mission values and your uh, you know, vision kind of aligns with what the program is offering. So I would definitely, as I told you in the beginning, what your values, because each one of us has different values in our life, what we uh, brought up from our families or whether, you know, we learned it from the school or the environment where we were placed at. So just make sure that they align with the institution. In that way, you will thrive more. You will be very happy that what you are doing is really matching your values. So we, we also look at that, you know, piece because your personal statement or, you know, your essay writing or uh, the things which you do gives us a, uh, you know, understanding what exactly you are reflecting on how you feel. So these things are an important piece when we are uh, you know, admitting you in the program. Uh, this is again a reputation about diversity, equity, and inclusion, as I said, uh, that is the piece which we look at, uh, making sure that we get people from all cultural backgrounds. We respect each and every community people, uh, every you know, ethnic, uh, any backgrounds, uh, and get get uh, you to know them and uh, apply their culture uh, even in the program and as well as throughout the institution. So that's 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 very important for us. Some of the prereq, uh, again, some of you already know, but uh, as for your reference, human anatomy and physiology with lab for each six credit hours, life lifespan development or developmental psychology three credit hours, uh, abnormal psychology, again, three credit hours, introduction to sociology or cultural anthropology, three credit hours, and then stats for three credit hours and medical terminology. The reason why we have all these requirements are because we want to, to make sure that you have foundations of these basic courses as uh, the course is more like program is more rigorous, but if you have these basics like you will still be uh, learning about anatomy uh, in 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 the program but in order to have those basics will really help you to uh, you know expand your knowledge and to learn more and that could be applied when you are doing 
hands on while it is during labs or during field work and also after graduating because in my personal experience also uh, i have seen like you know the time was different when i did my occupational therapy but again you know the basics are going to be the same it's not going to change even after 30 40 years from now so i i i realized that the foundations in my time like whatever i learned in the school time really helped me or whatever prereq i did it really helped me to uh, make it strong for me when i'm in the program so these things uh, as you know are important official transcript uh, you know again uh, we encourage uh, students from different programs, courses, different degrees, because that brings uh, more, uh, I would say, experience, knowledge, everything you're bringing with you, uh, and also interest, like somebody who is uh, uh, undergrad of sociology or anthropology, maybe they bring a different knowledge set than somebody with uh, biology uh, as an undergrad or major so we encourage you know different uh, degrees and but just to make sure even though if if you are still in the undergrad program uh, we we can we can have you for an interview but your degree should be completed uh, before the program starts so in case if your degree is not going to be completed by the you know time this program starts in august then probably you might want to wait for the next one in 2024 so uh, that is something which we will be looking at and gpa 3.0 is the kind of a requirement but again we look at different things when we do the selection it's 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 one of the strongest piece for you if you have a 3.0 gpa but uh, that's not going to make the decision entirely even if like you have 2.98 or 2.97 we can still consider you uh, if you're uh, overall admission package looks good and you have really done a great job in the interview process overall. Uh, we would also need three letters of recommendations, which uh, we would encourage you to take it from your professors, from undergrad or any other places where you have worked before, not from your family members or people you know of, because there could be biases associated with that. So again, you know, these can reflect how you are in the work field or in your educational field. So that gives us a little bit idea about your overall personality and that helps us in making the decision faster. As you will see that most of the schools will require an occupational therapy observation hours uh, at KGI. We encourage you to get those observational hours because if you are entering into the field of a prof some professional course, you should know what you are doing and you should also understand a little bit basics about that particular program. So we encourage you to do it, but nevertheless, in case if you are not able to complete it, there are ways to do certain things like maybe uh, shadow for a week or maybe get some kind of resources to learn about it. So uh, again, that's not carved in stone that if you haven't done it, then we will not admit you, but again, that is highly encouraged that you should uh, get some experience for the observation. With COVID, actually, uh, things have really uh, been easy now. We are not requiring any GRE. Uh, international students is something which we encourage uh, in case if they can come. I know there is an immigration process involved in that. So if they can take the TOEFL exam and then they can go through the immigration process, we are more than happy to take the international students. And as you are aware, there is a centralized application process, uh, OTCAS, which uh, you, know, you are already aware of. So we have to go through that process and you can apply. All right, I think I'm done with uh, most of the descriptions, what I was supposed to say, but now I'm gonna walk you, uh, give you a little bit of virtual, uh, uh, you know, seeing of the classrooms and stuff like that. So as you can see here, this is the occupational therapy classroom, one of the classrooms. Uh, you see the chairs here, they are kind of revolving. You can actually move to the side. I don't know if you can get the chance to visit us here. Uh, you know, uh, one of these days, then you can actually see how the classrooms are. And we have like a lot of team-based projects. So 
for instance, like four students will work together and they will face each other. Like for, for example, in my class, I am teaching psychosocial intervention and outcomes and I have a quiz. So what I will do is, and that's a team-based learning quiz. So four students will work together and I will give them the quiz and then they will face each other so they can move them you know, move to each other and work together. Or in case if they have to listen to the professor like straight uh, in front, they can do that as well. So this is ergonomically, this is a good chair. Uh, students like it. And the good thing is that uh, I think it's not here in this picture, but even you can stand like some people, like if you have back problem, if you're, you know, you're tired of sitting for a long period of time, because these lectures could be uh, 45 minutes or 40 minutes, you know, in one stretch. And then, you know, you get a break to go to the restroom and stretch yourself and then come back again because they could be like three hours long. Uh, some lectures are like three and a half hours long. So, you know, some students want to stand. So they will stand and then that will actually really, uh, you know, give them that break. Uh, so that's the good thing about these uh, classrooms, which I like. This is uh, one of the OT labs. As you can see that we, it's a, it's a big lab. Uh, as you can see in this room towards the end, there is a white door. So if you open that, there is another big room, which I will, show, I will be showing it to you that there are equipment there. And then there's another room inside. So it's kind of a maze, you know, going from one room to another, but you can see the plinths here, uh, you know, like, checking on each other, testing muscle strength, you know, checking joint range of motion, doing, you know, all kinds of physical stuff. Uh, students can do it on these plinths. And, you know, these are quite wide sized plinths and we have a plenty of uh, those. And then we have chairs, sufficient equipment uh, so that you get, uh, you know, resources wise, you are not limited. So you have everything. And we are uh, slowly building up, you know, more stuff as, as we are advancing in the program because it's a new program. So sometimes, you know, we are ordering it and then we realize, okay, we need to order more or we need to order some specific test or something. So as we are advancing, we are ordering more and more uh, stuff for our students. So I was telling you about that room, which goes, uh, you know, into that room. So this is the simulated kitchen area. As you know, that occupational therapists, they work on the simulated task. Uh, so this is like, you can see a refrigerator, the cabinets, reaching for the cabinets, you know, doing standing activities, how to turn and turn off the stove, uh, you know, safety wise. So everything is their sink. Uh, in fact, we have also a simulated bathroom where we can uh, practice tuck transfers. There is a commode chair, uh, there is a sink there. So we have all those kind of good things which uh, you will be taught in your physical dysfunction classes, uh, subject classes. And uh, we have made sure that we, we, we are uh, having each and every part of occupational therapy education in our uh, program. And then in, the, uh, in addition to what I showed you earlier, this is the anatomy lab. Uh, actually, we shared this lab with the physician assistant program. As you can see that, you know, uh, there are all these um, pieces are there, the bones and uh, different skeleton areas, parts. Uh, and then also we have an anatomage table, as you can see it in the front, uh, which is covered with a white sheet. This is actually provided by one of the prisoners. Uh, you can actually virtually dissect the body and you can see different muscles, nerves, bones. Uh, you, you can see different sections like or the sides, I would say, lateral side or front side, the anatomical view. So we have actually uh, physicians who are uh, visiting us to teach the anatomy course and uh, students really love them because they bring the first hand information from the physician, you know, and they uh, currently it is running uh, with our cohort one and they are really enjoying this course. And as I said, that we share this lab with the physician assistant program. So uh, that interdisciplinary collaboration piece is evident here. Now, as a part of your uh, overall growth uh, as a clinician, uh, we want to make sure that you do the practice like as if you do it in the real world or you, you learn as you practice in the real world, I would say. So you can see here the curtains and different, you know, uh, uh, plinths are there or tables are there. So when, when we have our uh, assessments, uh, we, we try to simulate as if you are seeing the real patients 
and give you different case scenarios based on uh, different conditions uh, where you will be working with your peers and will be tested. And of course, you will be trained first and then you'll be tested on how to evaluate the patient, how to treat the patient. Uh, for example, this looks like a hospital to me, right? Like you go there and different uh, beds are set up, there are curtains, like you open the curtain, how to approach the patient, like don't pull the curtain right away, but just like say, can I come in? So all those kind of mannerisms and not only that, but also, uh, you know, your real treatment interventions and evaluation. So you will be learning in these assessment labs. All right, so this was a brief, uh, you know, overview of uh, different labs and classrooms. And then finally, uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the accreditation process. I know that is an important part when you entered into the program, you should know about the accreditation uh, information. Uh, you want to get the best out of that. So just to let you know that uh, we are already approved uh, for uh, with, with our candidacy application. See, accreditation is, it's a process. So when any program starts, uh, you know, new, they have to go through a process. You, you don't get accreditation right away. So what they do is they will give you a time frame. You, you submit the intent, then they will ask you to submit uh, the application and provide the evidence for the candidacy. So which is, which is a big step. Once you go through the candidacy application and get that approval, it means that half of the battle is won. So, you know, you already, uh, our program already went through that and we got, already got approved uh, from the candidacy application. Now, what will happen is that, which was uh, decided in April of 2022, and that's why we were able to admit the students in August of 2022. So now what we have to do is during these uh, next couple of years in 2023 and until July of 2024, we will be offering the program and then we will be admitting the new uh, students, group of students in 2023, but they're going to visit us in uh, sometime actually in February and March of 2025. Before that, we will be submitting a self-study. Self-study is a kind of, uh, it, it's like we are submitting, like there are like different standards of the education, like uh, for doctoral program, there are about 130 standards. And we will be submitting the evidence that, you know, this is how we are meeting this standard through this course, through this assessment measure. And they will review that. And once they will review that, then they will come to visit us sometime in February and March of 2025. Once they will visit us, then they will give us the accreditation. And then after that, you know, some sometime in April of 2025, we will get the full accreditation. So there will be a candidacy state, then there will be a pre-accreditation, and then there will be an accreditation. So finally, in April of 2025, we will have the accreditation. All right. So I want to actually go back on the admissions timeline uh, as you know that uh, I already told you about the holistic admissions, diversity, equity, and inclusion, but uh, the OTCAS application, I think they have been open since July of 2022 for this cycle. Uh, we are interviewing the applicants uh, from October to June of 2023 because the program doesn't start until uh, the, the fall of 2023. So uh, while we are notifying, uh, you know, the applicants, uh, you know, while they are being interviewed, uh, after they are being interviewed, but this process will go until June because we know that some of you, uh, it, it, based on your interest or may, maybe based on what you decide, because you might be looking for 10 other schools to go into, but uh, we, we will be filling all the spots by June 2023 because the program starts in August. So for those of you who already like are getting uh, the approvals, that's great. Uh, so just think about that, the timeline and all what we are looking at. And if you have accepted it and you have confirmed it, that's great. But if you are still thinking about it, then probably, you know, we will be closing everything. And then once the 40 seats are complete or they are filled, probably, uh, you know, there's no spot left. Of course, we, we might have some in the waiting list because sometimes students say, oh, the, their mind has changed or shifted and they want to go to another state or something like that. That's a different scenario. So that's why we always have a more pool of students so that we can add like interview more students but then again we have only 40 uh, spots available
All right. And then finally, about the accreditation information, if you want to know more about it, you can go on the ACORD site, which is the Accreditation Council for Occupational Therapy Education. The address is provided below. But if you can go to the site, you can look into all the schools within California throughout United States, and you can see their statuses, what they are, like whether they are in candidacy, whether they are in intent or whether they are in pre-accreditation. Pre so everything is provided there. And uh, we are already uh, accredited by the Western Association of School Colleges, which is also some of the schools are not because you know it's a regional accreditation. Maybe they are uh, accredited by the national schools, but uh, regional is also very important. VASC is one of those, uh, I would say, not only the requirements, the quality wise, the educational standard wise. So we are already the OTD program is already accredited by them, so which is which is a plus sign for KGI. So uh, again, you know, just uh, recapping everything uh, I told you about, you know, our uh, program learning outcomes, the curricular threats, uh, you know, admission process, accreditation. Uh, again, you know, this is just a brief. I would say, although it was a little overwhelming, but it was still a, a brief summary of what I told you today, but uh, again, you are most welcome to email me or let me know anything. Uh, you know, I'm always one email away or, you know, one phone call away, or you want to come in here to see uh, one of these days uh, of our institution, I would be more than happy to uh, show you that. So that's that's pretty much I have today. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Uh, there's no questions in the chat. So does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask, please feel free. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just had questions about the labs. Um, so obviously um, the lab for anatomy was mentioned. I was just wondering how many of the courses have labs um, and if those are all in the rooms that you showed or if there is additional labs lab spaces that are used? Yeah, so uh, see, it depends upon the uh, structure of the course if they require lab. For example, we have courses on ethics, leadership, they don't require labs. So courses on occupations of adult and older adults, they have labs, occupations of children uh, and you know um, pediatrics, they have labs. We have labs for uh, the, you know, I think the, hold on a second. I think occupation as an activity, just give me a second. I have a book with me, give me a second. Yeah, no rush, thank you. Yeah, so we have a psychosocial, of course, that's, I forgot, I'm, I'm teaching you psychosocial, uh, the students, so that is, uh, that has the lab too, and then we have, uh, I think that's pretty much, and then there is a course called as therapeutic use of occupation, that will also have lab, because that's like teaching you different activity, how to do activity analysis and all that, that will also have a lab. Uh, so uh, I, I think we do have uh, this curriculum on the site. Maybe you want to look into it and see, uh, and it has all those courses and the labs associated with it. So probably that will give you more better picture of, but these are the only one which we have labs. And then of course you will have field work and capstones. They are also kind of experiential things. So I would say that could be included that way too, so. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. So we had we a have couple a come in the chat. Uh, okay. One is, could you tell us a little more about the interview process? Okay. So um, the interview process, uh, I think, uh, did you already apply it? Is that Serene, Serene Lee? Where are you in the, okay. Yeah, I didn't apply yet. I'm going to actually be applying um, sometime this week. So I just wanted to know a little bit more about the interview process. Yeah, so uh, you can contact the uh, admissions department. You have to apply it through the OTCAS application, I mean, uh, forum. So once they will uh, get that, then you will be uh, given a specific day to come for an interview. And that includes, I think we have few candidates here <laughs> from the last week's interview. So you will be 
you know, uh, uh, invited for that particular day where you will be uh, questioned on some specific questions. There will be an essay writing. There will be a ethical dilemma you will be working on. Uh, so there are good stuffs which you will be working on and that you will be also be reviewing certain articles where you will be asked some questions on it. So the, it will take almost like a whole day for you for that uh, particular day when you will be invited. So. Oh, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. And what is this? Is the school scheduled Monday to Friday, 8 to 5 p.m.? OK, so I would say yes. You have to be flexible. It is a on-campus course, like full time. So sometimes Fridays are much easier. We don't have classes on Fridays. Usually they are from Monday to Thursday. But when you are in the field work, then you might be going on Fridays, depending upon if your schedule is from Monday to Friday or from Tuesday to Saturday. Uh, so yes, so I would say that yes, keep it from Monday to Friday from 8 to 5 p.m. But uh, again, you know, it can vary based on the availability of the instructor. Sometimes, you know, the course might run until 5.30, I would say, uh, or maybe uh, it may start. Usually they don't run that late, but I'm saying in case that can happen too. But yeah, I would say eight to five is fine. Any other questions? I had a question about the interview um, process. I heard that you said we had to provide a writing sample and I also saw that on the email. Um, is that something that we do on the spot or is it something that we should already have? Like, is there a prompt before or is it uh, timed or can you go, if, do you know anything about that? So, uh, hold on a second. Yeah, so basically when you will be like uh, interviewed that day, you will be given like uh, evidence-based article where you will be, you know, answering uh, some of the questions in relation to that particular article. There will be like a prompt for you that, that you have to do it the same day. Uh, now in regards to uh, uh, the questions which you will be, of course, you will be uh, answering that will be instant, like whatever the questions will be asked to you by the professors, that will be instant. Uh, I am not sure about the essay writing. Maybe we have students here. Did you write any essays last time? Uh, which you can, uh, maybe Celia, do you remember? Did you write any essay? Um, yeah, so it wasn't an essay, um, but it was timed. And uh, like Dr. Sharma is saying, um, it was prompt and then there were multiple questions to answer. So I would say in total, it was essay length, but you don't, it's not a, in the format of an essay that you would write maybe in like a blue book in undergrad. Yeah, so it is that evidence-based article, right? For which you wrote the answers. Yeah, that's yeah. the only thing. Yeah, so that's instant. That will not be provided to you beforehand. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody oh, else? I'll, yes. I'll put our uh, I'll put our contact information in the the chat box as well too, just in case you forget your question and you think of it later and you'd like to follow up. I'll put my contact information. Uh, my name's Lexi, so I'll put that there. And then also our general admissions line. Um, we do have a counselor who is specifically focused on OTD admissions. So if you'd like to get connected with her, I'm happy to to do that for you as well. So feel free to either email me or the admissions uh, email for that. All right, yeah. looks like we are good. All right, well, thank you for joining us this evening. Have a good night. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Bye -bye. Stay warm.